Hey guys, so from this video we are going to start case based series and concept note. We will discuss the case presentation, the findings and ultimately arrive at the diagnosis and discuss the diagnostic disease. So let's get into it. A patient aged 57 years female reported to the department with the chief complaint of severe sharp and shooting type of pain on the right side of the face for the past two years. She describes the pain to be intermittent in nature but unbearable. She revealed history of pain that aggravates while eating, swallowing, washing her face, clenching her teeth and even on touching her face. She doesn't experience pain while sleeping. So what would be your provisional clinical diagnosis? The hints to look for in this case presentation are the patient experiences pain only on the right side so the pain is unilateral. Pain aggravates while eating, swallowing, washing her face, clenching her teeth and even on brushing. So these are the trigger zones. Another important cue that this patient shows is that she does not experience any pain while sleeping. So the most likely provisional clinical diagnosis would be trigeminal neuralgia. On extraoral examination, pain was present on touching the supraorbital, infraorbital, zygomatic, nasolabial fold, angle of mandible, and the upper and the lower lip on the right side of the face. On intraoral examination, pain was present on palpation of maxillary and mandibular alveolar ridge, right side of the tongue and heart palate. Patient jerked from the dental chair while eliciting pain. Further, a diagnostic block was given, first for the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, followed by the maxillary division and the patient was immediately free of pain. So that gives you a big cue. Thus, the diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia involving the maxillary and mandibular division on the right side of the face was established. So now let's talk about trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal neuralgia, also known as stick dolorex or Fothergill's disease, named after John Fothergill, is the most common of cranial neuralgias. The International Association for the Study of Pain IASP, defined trigeminal neuralgia as sudden, usually unilateral, severe, brief, stabbing, recurrent pain in the distribution of one or more branches of the fifth cranial nerve. The fifth cranial nerve or the trigeminal nerve has three branches, the ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular nerves. Purely sensory are the ophthalmic and maxillary nerve, whereas the mandibular nerve is both sensory and motor. Trigeminal neuralgia usually affects adults over 50 years of age. The International Classification of Headache Disorders ICHD3 describes three variants of trigeminal neuralgia that may only be diagnosed following imaging. Classical trigeminal neuralgia occurs with demonstration on MRI or during surgery of neurovascular compression with morphological changes in the trigeminal nerve root. Compression is typically associated with nerve atrophy or displacement. Secondary trigeminal neuralgia is reserved for a typical trigeminal neuralgia phenotype which is associated with a local or systemic disease. And idiopathic trigeminal neuralgia, that is typical trigeminal neuralgia, which is not associated with nerve compression, local or systemic disease, any of it. Both classical and idiopathic trigeminal neuralgia are subdivided into purely paroxysmal and those with concomitant persistent pain. Regarding the etiology and pathogenesis of trigeminal neuralgia, Approximately 10% of trigeminal neuralgia cases are symptomatic and have detectable underlying pathology such as a tumor of the cerebellopontine angle, a demyelinating plague of multiple sclerosis or a vascular malformation. The most common tumor associated with trigeminal neuralgia is a meningioma of the posterior cranial fossa. The most widely accepted theory is that a majority of cases of classic trigeminal neuralgia are caused by an atherosclerotic blood vessel usually the superior cerebral artery, pressing on and grooving the root of the trigeminal nerve. This pressure results in focal demyelination and hyperexcitability of the nerve fibers, which will then fire in response to light touch, resulting in brief episodes of intense pain. 
The paint characteristically has an electric shock like quality and is unilateral except in small percentage of cases. Pain in trigeminal neuralgia is precipitated by a light touch on a trigger zone present on the skin or mucosa within the distribution of the involved nerve branch. Common sites for trigger zone includes the nasolabial fold and the corner of the lip. Just after an attack, there is a refractory period when touching the trigger zone will not precipitate pain, which is an important point. The number of attacks may vary from one or two per day to several per minute. Paroxysms last for a few seconds to less than two minutes and there is no pain while sleeping. The stabbing pain can mimic the pain of a cracked tooth, but the two disorders can be distinguished by determining whether placing food in the mouth without chewing or whether gently touching the soft tissue around the trigger zone will precipitate pain. Trigeminal pain will be triggered by touching the soft tissue, whereas pressure on the tooth is required to cause pain from a cracked tooth. Styloid process length has to be evaluated in order to rule out Eagle syndrome. A clinical examination alone may be insufficient to distinguish symptomatic from classical trigeminal neuralgia. So in some cases, electrophysiological testing of trigeminal ref reflexes is more accurate. Local anesthetic nerve blocks, which temporarily eliminate the trigger zone and painful episodes are also good diagnostic tools. Since approximately 10% of trigeminal neuralgia cases are caused by detectable underlying pathology, enhanced MRI of the brain is indicated to rule out tumors multiple sclerosis and vascular malformations. The diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia is based on the history of shooting electric shock-like pain along a branch of the trigeminal nerve, the presence of trigger zones and refractory periods. Regarding the management, oral medication is usually the first line of treatment of classical trigeminal neuralgia due to its high effective rate, non-invasiveness and low cost. Initial therapy for trigeminal neuralgia should consist of anticonvulsant drugs, which are more frequently used and more effective as well. Carbamazepine is the most commonly prescribed drug and is an effective therapy for greater than 85% of newly diagnosed cases of trigeminal neuralgia. The drug is administered slowly. Patients receiving carbamazepine must have periodic hematologic laboratory evaluation because serious life-threatening blood dyscrasias occur in rare cases. Gabapentin is another anticonvulsant with fewer side effects than carbamazepine and it may be effective in milder cases but it does not appear to be as reliable as carbamazepine. In cases where drug therapy is ineffective or when the patient is unable to tolerate the side effects of drugs after trials of several agents, surgical therapy is indicated. Peripheral surgery includes cryosurgery on the trigeminal nerve branch that triggers the painful attacks. This procedure is most frequently performed at the mental nerve for cases involving the third division and at the infrared vital nerve for cases involving the second division. This procedure is usually effective for 12 to 18 months at which time it must be repeated or another form of therapy must be instituted. One procedure performed at the level of the gazerin ganglion is percutaneous radiofrequency thermocoagulation. A severe complication of peripheral procedures is a severe neuropathic pain including anesthesia dolorosa which is numbness combined with severe intractable pain. Percutaneous balloon compression of the trigeminal nerve is a procedure where a hollow needle is used to place a balloon next to the nerve which is then inflated. It is in almost all the patients there is only a mild sensory loss with immediate pain. The most extensively studied and most successful surgical procedure is microvascular decompression of the nerve root at the brainstem where the artery is separated from the nerve root. Over 70% of patients experience long-term relief of symptoms with this procedure. Percutaneous glycerol rhizotomy or glycerol injection is performed under mild sedation and local anesthesia. A little quantity of sterile glycerol is injected damaging the trigeminal nerve and blocking the pain signals. An opening at the base of the skull is accessed by inserting a needle through the face which is then guided by imaging techniques to the joint joining point of the three branches of trigeminal nerve. This procedure uses similar trajectories as in radiofrequency lesioning and balloon compression where the needle is inserted into the trigeminal cistern through the foramen ovale. 
and lastly gamma knife stereotactic radio surgery which is a minimally invasive technique for the treatment of trigeminal neuralgia the technique uses multiple beams of radiation converging in three dimensions to focus precisely on a small volume of brain tissue the method relies on precise MRI sequencing that helps localization of the beam and allows a higher dose of radiation to be given to targets inside the skull with more sparing of normal tissues. This technique is not as effective as microvascular decompression but it is particularly helpful for elderly patients with a high risk of complication during surgery. So this was about trigeminal neuralgia and concept note on the same topic. I hope you have liked the video. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching the video.